the state of the game. This podcast is what it is. A gaming culture podcast in which we discuss things. I hope you enjoy, but not too much. Here we are. It's Landon, your average yard bark. Noah could not make it this week, sadly, but the show must go on. We carry on. We'll do this ourselves. In the news this week, the uh, Cold War multiplayer reveal, which uh, I feel like I have to mention just because it's Call of Duty and it's huge, and there's not really much to say about it. It was uh, it's Call of Duty, another year, another another game. I think it's pretty Black Ops esque. I think I'll enjoy it. I'm ready for when it comes out. I'll have the early access beta on October or something. It's probably subject to change because that's how they do things in the big leagues, apparently. The next piece of news is the PS5 and Xbox reveal event, which no one cares about uh, because it's going to be the same. More more power, better graphics, uh, higher prices. Congratulations. Now you know. That's that's it for the news. I'm just I'm just flying through it this week. There's there's nothing nothing special going on. All right, topic this week. This is a doozy, and not one I think we'll get a lot of answers for, but I'm gonna try. It's something that we need to discuss, promote critical thinking on. You know, is internet access a right or a privilege? And if it's a privilege and not a right. Should you have to have a license to access it like you have to have for a car? The reason I've been wondering this is because games nowadays are inextricably linked with the internet. Every game is online. You know, there's a few games here and there where they're just single player and there's no online. But even those, you have to be connected to the internet because inevitably there's going to be updates. But the internet is a dangerous place. It's like the real world, but virtual. All the trouble that you can get into in the real world today is basically present on the internet, but it's even easier to access. Now, I am a fan of the internet. I really am. Most of the things I do in my life are on the internet. (laughs) So, should we regulate who can be on it? Because the amount of trouble that you can get into is is it's exorbitant. It but anyone can access. You know, like you don't let a 10-year-old drive a car. You know, cuz he might kill himself or other people. But we let him access the internet. And you might think, you know, the internet's not as dangerous physically as driving a car, but I would submit that uh, knowing how the internet can ruin people's lives, you know, identity theft, we all get phishing emails, uh, you get those phone calls about about the vacation to the uh, the Bahamas, you know, that you gotta redeem if you give them your social security number and your, your credit card. Like, what happens when, you're, when your 10 year old gets an email on his school account about, about a, I don't know, a free game, uh, a vacation? A Lamborghini and all he has to do is get his parents credit card and read the numbers off and type them in so for first let's establish because and the reason why I ask if it's a right or a privilege is because in my worldview I don't believe that if something is a right you can legally regulate it you know and this is this is like the free speech like all the amendments all the, the Bill of Rights there's no regulations on rights at least there shouldn't be, because the basis of our the, of our country is the beginning of the Constitution, where it says everyone has the right to pursue happiness, equal opportunity. Right? We believe in equal opportunity, and whether it exists or not in America today is a different topic that I won't get into. But we all agree that everyone should have the same opportunities, and because we believe that everyone should have the same opportunities, we believe in rights. And that goes as far as, as your rights don't infringe upon other people's rights, right? Right. So, okay, quick history aside. I think the argument for the internet being a right today goes as far as you need the internet to get a job. 
I think that's true. I think you need the internet to submit online applications. The last five jobs I've applied for, I'm 25 years old, I've had to submit an online application. If you go into the place where you want to work and you say, hi, could I have an application? How do I get hired here? They say, oh, go online and submit an online application. That's just the way it works nowadays. Not to mention government forms. And it, believe it or not, some of them are only accessible online. It's hard to believe, but it's true. The government, behind on all the technology, you know, you still have to go into the DMV, but some of these forms you can only access online. Now, I would say that constitutes some internet access as a right because if you don't if you aren't able to get a job if you aren't able to submit your your legal forms then you, you it's infringing on your right to to pursue happiness right so but that's why we have the library the library gives you free internet um starbucks you know there's ways to access the internet if you are not able to financially uh, if you're not able to buy internet access, which most of us do in America, there's ways like the library and the government center that you can go into and freely access the internet for free. But what about stuff like Facebook, Instagram, all the socials, YouTube, uh, Netflix, all the things that your average person uses the internet for, gaming? Are those rights? And I would say no. What are your rights to free speech, to defend yourself against against harm, uh, to be able to to pursue happiness? Like those, your basic rights. And today, you know, and this is controversial. I know, I'm old school. There are many people that believe rights go much farther. You know, but most of us agree that a car driving is a privilege. You know, it's a luxury. Things that make your life more convenient aren't necessarily rights. You know, to play video games is not a right. Um, so if that stuff's not a right, can we regulate it? What should we? Uh, what should be the, the licensing program? And the reason I think about licenses is because the internet is such a dangerous place, yet anyone can access it. You know, should we have? Should you have to be 18 to access the internet? I don't think so. I'm sure some people do think so. Should there be a licensing system where you have to prove that you learned about spam and phishing and internet scams? Should you have to take a course? And a lot of places do offer courses. A lot of private schools and even public schools offer internet safety programs, and that's freaking awesome. I think we're so dumb not to think about uh, protecting our, our children from from internet danger. You know, there's pedophiles online, there's 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 predators. Um, we all know the stories about, hey, t little Timmy, meet me at the park and I'll show you my Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Uh, and then little Timmy's murdered in the in the in the forest. Uh, why why are we letting our kids on the internet, folks? <laughs> why? Uh, the simple question. So sh should there be an internet license? And don't get me wrong, I I don't want people to have to pay for this license. I think it should be easily accessible, and I don't think there should be a, an organization that decides who and who can't access the internet. Uh, I think that's dumb. But what I think we need to do more of is educate people. I think there should be programs. You know, the government spends so much money on so much worthless stuff. Why don't they spend more money on educating their people to make their own decisions? educated decisions like like a car you know like you know the the government decides who can and who cannot own a car and it costs way too much money to register your vehicles and all that let's let's change that program for the internet and make it a free program and all all you have to do is it's go through a course you know like driver's ed and you have to take a test and you have to get you know whatever 70 to 90 percent correct uh and it's it's questions that, that, or it's it's courses that educate kids and adults about the dangers of the internet and what can go wrong if you if you don't know what you're doing online. I think 
the internet is big enough now and it's democratized enough now where we need to start implementing the, th the same things that we do uh, in, in, in physical life, you know, with street signs, stoplights. Let's have some organization. And I'm, I do not want the government involved in regulating uh, the web. I think that's a horrible idea. But what I do want is just education. That's what I, I think we should have, a license system that allows people to be educated on what they're doing and they can choose what to do with it. There's so many kids who are just free roaming around the web doing whatever they want that we don't, as, as parents of the 21st century, I'm not a parent, I'm saying we is the collective we. You know, parents of the 21st century in the large part of it don't understand the internet and the danger. Uh, they, they know what's, what uh, a scam is, you know, but I don't think the majority of parents today fully understand the risks. And because it's a privilege and not a right, for the sake of the discussion, I'm totally open to arguments about it being a right and totally put it in the comments. I want to learn. I want to hear other opinions on this, other points of view. Um, my whole goal here is to promote discussion and critical thinking. So that's what we're doing. I could be totally wrong, but the point is for the discussion, if we're acknowledging that these portions of the internet that aren't um, government papering and what did I say? I said, uh, well, whatever else I said, the rest of this luxury of the internet is a privilege. We should educate people more. We really should. We got to look out for our neighbors, look out for our communities, look out for ourselves, our future generations. We don't want all their money being stolen by scammers. We don't want them murdered in the forest. I th let's get on top of this. Let's, uh, let's not let tech rule us. We got to rule over the tech, you know? All right, let's get into the state of the game. State of the game! We're breezing through this here, folks. We're getting it done. Noah would be proud. Let's get the state of the game going. This week it's Rogue Company. You probably heard about it. It's the Fortnite of CSGO. Uh, Rogue Company is a game that's currently in beta, but you can also pay for it. It's it's a weird... I, I don't understand it at all. It frustrates me. So I got a beta code from Noah, who got it from someone else. It's not sketchy, I promise. So we played it for free uh, in the closed beta, but they're also offering like a three-tier paid founders pack right now um, if you want to just not wait for it which I don't really understand because it's going to be free to play when it actually re releases there's a lot I don't understand about Epic Games but suffice it to say Rogue Company is a uh, tactical arena uh, third person shooter with objectives, um, picture CS:GO or Counter-Strike, but Fortnite style and cheesiness. It's I'm gonna be upfront about this. It's it's not up my alley. I've never been a fan of the uh, search and destroy demolition type game modes anyway. Um, but CS:GO, there was I don't know, there was something there that that this game does not have. Rogue Company, and it's a free-to-play game. Or it supposedly will be, air quotes. As a free-to-play game, it's not bad. It, it's, it totally meets all the criteria you need in a free-to-play game. There's plenty of stuff to pay for, plenty of cosmetics to buy. Uh, if you want to give your 15-year-old kid something to play, um, He'll probably masturbate to the characters because they're in like these sexy outfits and and it's really weird the way that they it's it's style as a kid's game but you know there's characters wearing bras and stuff I don't get it I don't understand it but uh, other than that it's it's a good game if you don't have any money and you just want something to play it may sound like I'm being harsh here but I don't understand why anybody with money would play the game. And I know that it's probably not their audience. They're they're going for those those kids who play Fortnite, and uh, and just want something free to play. That's that's kind of high quality. 
it's a good it's a good high high eh. guys I'm struggling here I'm trying to say nice things about it I just don't like the game I think it's 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 obviously with free to play games it's it's just kind of a gateway drug to you spending money and all they really want is for you to spend money I'm cynical about it but it's because it's true the the company who makes free to play games or games in general they're not looking out for your best interests they just want your money this is true of most of most companies of any genre they're making a thing to give you something that you want to pay for for money and it's not bad that's how capitalism works that's how a society uh, trades and barters that's how we make livings so we pay for our kids to go to college it's not bad just be aware be aware when you when you pick up a, a free-to-play game that you don't have to spend money but that their ultimate goal is for you to spend money it's like any media you know it's just a money grab anyway anyway rogue company uh, it's not bad it's it's enjoyable for me it's enjoyable for the first five minutes I I'm not a fan of the cheesiness the the, the random like Mission Impossible jazzy music that they put in there that has the same chord progression for the entirety of the game that you play for hours um, there's it's got enough depth to keep a free-to-play uh, substantially interesting but it's not like it's Rainbow Six Siege you know like there's not enough in there to to keep you interested for more than an hour I'd say um, if that's your only choice then great get it uh, I wouldn't spend any money on it I think if you want a free-to-play uh, I don't know play Warzone much more depth in Warzone. Um, see, this is why I need Noah here. I need his positivity. I need his uh, his more forgiving attitude towards things. Noah is the kind of guy who plays games just for fun, and he doesn't really care if they're good or not. Uh, I don't want to slander him by saying he doesn't care about quality. That's totally not what I'm saying. Noah enjoys quality, but he also is easily, and he said it himself, um, He's easily uh, occupied by things, whereas I, I'm not. I'm too ADD. I can't just sit there and play a game, and and enjoy it for what it is. And if if you're one of those people like Noah who likes just games in general and just playing games, you're gonna like Rogue Company. It's it's good for that. Uh, it's got solid mechanics. I don't enjoy them. Um, I I don't enjoy the kind of games that. Uh, you know, you earn uh, in-game money by the XP you get from playing the game, and, and with that money, it's like Counter-Strike, where you, you upgrade your guns from round to round by, by using the in-game points that you've acquire, acquired, that you've accrued, accrued acquired, uh, from killing players with your pistol, then you can buy a, an SMG, and when you get that money, you can buy a, a grenade, and, you know, that's too much, that's too much thinking for me. That's too much thinking. I'm, I'm more of a COD Battlefield guy where you spawn in, they give you your guns already. Uh, it's much easier. There is fun to be had in Rogue Company. I found a little bit of it. I'm sure someone else, like Noah, could find a lot more of it. Um, I don't know. I'm not a fan of how Epic Games does stuff. They, they're they doing this... Um, like, I couldn't get any gameplay for this because I haven't played it in a month because it's not interesting. Um... And I couldn't get a game because they're doing this thing where, uh, I forgot what they call it, but if you don't log in in a certain amount of time, they, they kick you out, basically. So I, I'm, that's my, my theory is what's happening to me is that since I haven't played the game in a while, they, they, I'm, I'm AFK to them, and they kick me out of the, the code thing so I can't access the game anymore. I think that's kind of lame. It's like, why would you, why? What does that benefit you? Just give out more codes if you don't have enough players. Maybe if you don't have enough people playing the game, it's not a good game. Maybe you should get good. That's that's my two cents. Um, Rogue Company. I, I just get more frustrated the more I talk about this game. <laughs> to the point where now I'm just thinking, Rogue Company 
don't even bother. You know, that's the tagline for me. I think we tolerate too much low quality crap in the gaming industry today. Uh, we just throw money, throw money and, 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 and play time at games that are not worth it. And if we keep doing that, game companies, publishers, are not going to get the message that we want quality games. We're willing to pay for games that are good. You know, free-to-play games are great, but uh, just make something that's good at the same time, you know? There's plenty of games you can get the Rogue Company experience, but just a million times better if you just pay for it. All right, I'm off the soapbox now. That's the state of the game for Rogue Company. My opinion, let me know your thoughts in the comments, uh, topics for other games. If you disagree or agree, I don't care. Just let us know. We want to have a discussion. And we'll see you next week on the State of the Game podcast. There you go.